Let's start by picturing something familiar, like a pebble tossed into a calm pond. The disturbance from the pebble sends ripples across the surface, spreading outward from the point of impact. This image, while simple, provides a surprisingly accurate depiction of a complex concept in physics, gravitational waves. You see, gravitational waves are the space-time equivalent of those pond ripples. Their disturbances that travel across the fabric of space-time, caused by the acceleration of massive objects. Picture the most massive things you can think of, like stars or black holes. When these celestial giants move, they cause ripples in the space-time around them, just like the pebble in our pond. But here's where things get interesting and a bit counterintuitive. Unlike the ripples in our pond, these space-time ripples don't encounter friction. They don't slow down or lose energy as they travel. They keep going, undeterred, at the speed of light, no less. But why? How can this be? It's a fascinating question. One that takes us deep into the heart of Einstein's theory of general relativity and the very nature of space-time itself. It challenges our everyday experiences of movement and friction, inviting us to see the universe in a whole new light. But before we dive into the why, let's first understand more about these space-time ripples. They're more than just a theoretical curiosity. They're a fundamental aspect of the universe, carrying vital information about the most violent and energetic events in the cosmos. From the cataclysmic collisions of black holes to the explosive deaths of massive stars, these ripples in space-time bear witness to events so powerful they shape the very structure of the universe. And yet, despite their cosmic significance, these ripples move freely through space-time, unimpeded by friction. Now let's delve into why these ripples don't encounter friction. Uh, to understand why ripples in space-time don't encounter friction, we first need to understand space-time itself. The concept of space-time is at the heart of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. It's a four-dimensional framework combining the three dimensions of space with the one dimension of time. Einstein's theory tells us that space-time isn't just a stage where events unfold. It's an active player in the cosmic drama. Its shape and behavior are influenced by the objects within it. To visualize this, imagine a rubber sheet stretched taut. If you place a heavy ball on it, the sheet curves around the ball. This is akin to how massive objects like stars and black holes bend space-time with their gravity. Now let's add another object to our rubber sheet, say, a marble. It will roll along the curve created by the heavy ball. This is analogous to how objects move in the universe. They follow the curves in space-time made by more massive bodies. So what happens when a massive object moves or accelerates, like when two black holes spiral towards each other? It creates ripples in the space-time fabric, much like how a boat moving through water creates waves. These are what we call gravitational waves. But here's where the analogy with water waves ends. Water waves lose energy as they move, due to friction with the water molecules. But space-time isn't made of molecules or anything material. It's a smooth, continuous entity. There's no stuff for the ripples to interact with, to rub against, to lose energy to. And that's why gravitational waves don't encounter friction. They can travel across the vast cosmos without being impeded, carrying with them the signature of the cataclysmic events that created them. So, space-time is a smooth, continuous entity. There's nothing for the ripples to snag on, hence no friction. Let's now consider the speed at which these ripples or gravitational waves travel. Imagine the fastest thing you can, a beam of light, a shooting star, or even a superhero in a comic strip. Gravitational waves travel at this unfathomable speed. They move at the cosmic speed limit, the speed of light, which is roughly 186,000 miles per second. You might wonder why so fast. Well, the answer lies in the very nature of space-time and the waves themselves. Gravitational waves are not like cars on a highway or swimmers in a pool. They're not physical entities moving through a medium where friction can slow them down. Instead, they're disturbances in space-time itself. They're akin to the ripples spreading across a pond. But unlike the water ripples, gravitational waves have nothing to slow them down. Remember, friction is all about interaction. It occurs when two objects or substances come into contact. 
causing energy to be lost as heat. However, space-time isn't a substance. It's a smooth, continuous fabric. There's nothing for these ripples to interact with, nothing for them to rub against. Hence, there's no friction to slow them down. Moreover, when you're moving at the speed of light, there's essentially no time for interactions that could slow you down. It's like being the fastest runner in a race with no obstacles in your path. There's simply nothing that can hinder your progress. So, gravitational waves, these tiny disturbances in the fabric of space-time, travel unimpeded at the fastest speed possible. They carry the imprint of their source, be it a merging pair of black holes or a supernova explosion, across the vast emptiness of the universe. Just like a feather floating freely in space, gravitational waves travel unimpeded through the vast emptiness of space. They ripple across the cosmos, carrying whispers of cosmic events from far-flung corners of the universe, unhindered by the concept of friction. While there's no friction, gravitational waves do weaken as they travel, but that doesn't mean they can't be detected. Gravitational waves, despite their unimpeded journey through the cosmos, do lose strength as they traverse the vast expanse of space. This is not due to any frictional force, but rather a natural consequence of the energy they carry dispersing over a larger and larger area as they move away from their source. Picture the ripples from a pebble in a pond again. As they move away from the point of impact, they spread out, becoming less distinct. Gravitational waves behave similarly on their cosmic journey. However, just because these waves weaken, it doesn't mean they disappear entirely. In fact, with the right tools, we can detect these faint whispers of cosmic events. One such tool is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO for short. LIGO is a marvel of modern science, designed to pick up the minute disturbances caused by passing gravitational waves. It works by bouncing lasers back and forth in two long perpendicular tunnels. When a gravitational wave passes by, it will slightly stretch one tunnel and shorten the other. This changes the time it takes for the lasers to travel, creating an interference pattern that can be measured. Even though these changes are smaller than the width of a proton, LIGO can detect them. Detecting these waves is more than just a scientific curiosity. Each gravitational wave carries with it a story of the cosmic event that created it. By studying these waves, we can learn about the nature of black holes, neutron stars, and other exotic phenomena in a way that no telescope could ever reveal. So, the night sky isn't just a canvas of stars and galaxies. It's a dynamic fabric, rippling with the echoes of cosmic events, carrying stories from the universe's grand drama. So, we've learned that the ripples in space-time don't encounter friction because space-time is a smooth, continuous entity, and these ripples travel at the speed of light. To summarize, we dove into the nature of space-time and how it is not just a passive backdrop, but an active participant in the cosmic drama. We've explored how massive objects like stars and black holes warp space-time, creating curves that other objects follow. We touched on how this warping leads to gravitational waves, likened to ripples on a pond, 